Are you a dedicated Micro Terrors listener? Then become one of the terrified by joining the Micro Terrors fan club. All members receive a welcome pack in the mail that includes a collectible Micro Terrors trading card, a Micro Terrors bookmark, printable games, coloring pages, and a personalized Micro Terror story with you as the main character. With two different membership levels to choose from, you can also enjoy commercial free episodes, read stories a week early, participate in polls, receive complimentary paperback copies of all Micro Terror books in the mail when they release, as well as enjoy discounted pricing on previously released books, and communicate directly with Micro Terror's writer and creator, Scott Donnelly. Become one of the terrified today at microterrors.com. Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Witches Brew by Scott Donnelly The first really nice fall day of the season had come to an end. My dad and I, along with my dad's new girlfriend, Rebecca, sat in the backyard at Rebecca's house, which edged up against a heavily wooded area. We roasted marshmallows over a crackling fire pit. The marshmallow at the end of my stick was glowing orange, but the one on my dad's and Rebecca's were beginning to burn. Without warning, my dad's marshmallow cracked open and bled its sticky white goo into the fire pit, causing Rebecca to laugh. "'You act like such an amateur at roasting marshmallows,' she bellowed. "'Please tell me you've done this before.' "'I have,' my dad playfully insisted. As the evening continued with laughs and bonding between myself and Rebecca over how good we were at roasting marshmallows compared to my dad, the glow of the sun in the sky began to fade fast as it sank behind the woods. Together we cleaned up the tools, folded up the chairs, and put out the fire. Rebecca had gone back inside her house with a handful of used paper plates, and I stood in the backyard with my dad as the dark of night began to swath over us. He took in a long, deep breath of autumnal air and let it out. "'I'll tell you what,' he began. There's no better smell in the world than a fire pit in the fall time. I wrapped my arms around my dad and agreed wholeheartedly. You boys coming in? We can make up the beds now, Rebecca called from the doorway. My dad looked down at me. You're still okay to spend the night here tonight? I nodded with a smile. Yeah, it'll feel like a sleepover at a friend's house. Plus, I shyly began to add, I like Rebecca. I think she's nice. My dad smiled. I could tell he was relieved that I thought that. We'd been through a lot after losing my mom, and for my dad to find someone else he connected with so well, and that I enjoyed the company of also, well, it seemed right for both of us. Milo, these new Superman sheets aren't going to make themselves! Rebecca playfully singled me out, somehow skillfully discovering my very own kryptonite. I couldn't turn down anything Superman-related. Let's go, my dad said, placing a hand on my shoulder and walking me back inside. As the night went on, I dreamed good dreams, and occasionally could hear the crickets and trees swishing around from outside the open window in my bedroom. For some reason, my dreams manifested the sounds into crickets using brooms to sweep the frozen floors of Superman's Fortress of Solitude. 
Then suddenly I was startled awake by my dad rocking me hard back and forth in the bed. When I opened my eyes, I could see my dad in the moonlight that shone in through the window. His eyes were bugged out and he looked afraid. I sat up quickly. Dad, what's wrong? Shh, he hushed me. She'll hear you. Who? Rebecca, he whispered. Something's wrong with her. She's not… she's not right. I grew more afraid and hopped out of bed. We need to leave, my dad urged. He rushed to the window and pulled away the thin, flowing curtains that hung in front of it. Look! I scuttled over to the window and looked out into the backyard. Beyond the cold, still fire pit were the dark woods. I scoured the backyard but didn't see anything out of the ordinary. What am I looking at? I asked quietly. There, he said, pointing directly through the expanse of trees. I squinted and finally saw what he saw, a glowing green light. What is that? I asked. My dad slowly shook his head, not removing his eyes from the obstructed radiance. Then he began to repeat something in a soft, nervous voice. Through the shadows, to the glow, to safety we go. Through the shadows, to the glow, to safety we go. Through the shadows, I just stared at him. Glow, what does that mean? To safety we go. My dad looked down at me. It's an old saying I remember from my childhood. I never knew what it meant until this very moment. That green light is how we get to safety, how we get away from Rebecca. Are you sure? I've never been so sure. I trusted my dad with every ounce of my being. He was the only consistent, safe thing in my life. So as strange and eerie as this whole scenario was, I trusted him. I nodded and took his hand. Holding hands, we rushed out the back door and through the yard. The crickets silenced, the trees fell still, and we crossed the edge of the property into the woods. Our feet scampered through fallen leaves and over broken branches. We used the moonlight above us to see, and the green glow up ahead is our beacon for safety. Even though I completely trusted my dad, I was still willing to admit how strange and weird this all felt. What was the glow up ahead coming from? How could it guarantee our safety from Rebecca? And perhaps the most pressing question running through my mind, what was wrong with Rebecca? What had my dad so spooked about her that he'd be willing to run through the woods in the middle of the night? Well, we were about to find out what the mysterious green light was all about and how it could help us. Its glow was getting bigger the closer we got, and finally we burst through another wall of trees and into a large circular clearing. There, we stopped when we saw the source of the green glow. A large, black cauldron sat at the center of the clearing. A white-hot fire burned beneath it. Bubbling from the cauldron was a bright, green, glowing liquid that popped tiny bubbles into the air. Just then, all around the clearing, torches embedded into the ground exploded to life with flames furiously licking the cold autumn night. She, 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 she's a witch, I uttered in disbelief. Coming to the realization of Rebecca's creepy secret that had my dad so spooked, this is where she holds her creepy ceremonies, I added. This, this is where she, she makes her witch's brew. It's a stew, actually. I heard Rebecca's voice say next to me. I turned to where my dad was standing and felt my entire body go white from fear. My dad was no longer there. In his place was Rebecca, looking as beautiful as she was earlier in the night. Where's my dad? I stammered. Asleep back at the house, she said. You know, I heard what he said last night after the fire was put out. How a fire in the fall is the best smell in the world. I couldn't disagree more. You know what my favorite smell is? I couldn't answer. I was frozen in fear. Rebecca continued. My favorite smell in the world is the smell of children boiling in my stew. <laughs> As she spoke those words, Rebecca's natural skin color faded into a dark green. Her nose elongated and sprouted hideous boils and hairy moles. 
Her eyes turned yellow and narrow, and all of her hair fell out. Her fingers stretched, and her nails formed sharp tips like claws. You are my last ingredient, the witch hissed. She grabbed me so quickly that I didn't have time to react or try to escape. She wrapped her claws around me and dragged me toward the bubbling cauldron. I screamed and kicked, but it was to no avail. Her grip only grew tighter around me. She lifted me completely off the ground and then levitated with me into the air. We hovered just above the cauldron. I looked down into the bubbling green liquid. I could see bones and other scary things floating around within it. Put me down! I screamed. As you wish, she hissed. I felt her grip loosen and prepared for my demise. But then a stone the size of a hockey puck soared through the air and hit the witch in the head. It knocked her off balance, making her drop me off to the side where I crashed into the leaves and dirt beside the cauldron. While in midair, she turned to face her attacker. It was my dad. He held another stone and whipped it at her. It thwacked her directly between the eyes and dropped her like a sack of flour right into the cauldron. She splashed down with a horrifying wail sinking and disappearing into the acidic concoction. As her bones floated up to the surface, my dad rushed over to me and helped me to my feet. Are you okay? He asked. Yeah, I said, brushing myself off. Rebecca was a witch. I should have seen it coming. She'd been Lex Luthor from the start, using my love for Superman to lure me in, using the trust I had for my dad against me. Did, 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 you, did you meet her on that dating app? I asked. My dad nodded, feeling ashamed. Delete that app then, Dad. Meet someone in the real world. Consider it done, he said. He pulled his phone out right then and there and opened the app. Oh, he said with surprise, I have a message. I rolled my eyes. She is pretty, he said, furrowing his brow. Her name's Raven. She's 35, lives in Salem. Whoa, 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 whoa! I stopped my dad right there. Delete that app, Dad. Now! Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com where you can get the latest Micro Terrors news, read fun facts about each story, sign up for our monthly newsletter, and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you can become one of the terrified by joining the fan club at microterrors.com to enjoy exclusive perks like reading stories a week early, receiving complimentary books, and communicating directly with Micro Terrors writer and creator Scott Donnelly. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram using the handle at Micro Terrors. I hope you'll join us again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Attention, young mystery seekers. Are you ready to dive deeper into the world of the unknown? If you love the spooky tales from Micro Terrors, you're going to die for Creepy Clubhouse. Creepy Clubhouse is a monthly book subscription box that brings the most thrilling, spine-tingling stories right to your doorstep. Each box is packed with books and gifts that feature a new theme every month, from aliens to Bigfoot to the Bermuda Triangle. Perfect for brave listeners like you who can't get enough of the chills and thrills. And because you're a part of the Micro Terrors family, we've got a special treat just for you. Use the promo code TERROR10 to get 10% off your first Creepy Clubhouse subscription box order. Don't miss out on this eerie adventure where every box is a doorway into the unknown. Visit CreepyClubhouse.com and remember to use your exclusive code TERROR10. Join the club.
Embrace the creepy.